Okay, so if you hear noise in the background, that's my mom listening to the TikTok, and that's my family talking about tomorrow for school and shoveling the snow. So we left off on chapter four, and now we are on our way. We are on our merry way to chapter five, and we have. Uh, this is. Oh wow, this is the longest chapter we've got. So let's just go right now. Chapter five. When Dixie couldn't stand to be left alone, we found out. We found that out real quick. If me and the preacher went off and left him behind in the trailer, he pulled. He pulled all the cushions off the couch and all the toilet paper off the wall. So we started trying. We tried. We started trying him out up outside with a rope when we left. That wouldn't work either. When Dixie howled until Samuel missed, well, the wet dwellers' dog started howling too. It was exactly the kind of noise that people in an, an all adult trailer park do not like to hear. It just doesn't want to be left alone. I told the preacher, that's all, let's take him with us. I could understand the way when Dixie felt getting left behind, but we made his heart feel empty. But after a while, the preacher gave in, and, every, and everywhere we went, we took Win Dixie, even to church. The Open Arms Baptist Church of Noami isn't a regular looking church. The building used to be a picket quick store. And when we walk in the front door, the first thing you see is the picket quick moto. It's written on the floor in little tiny red tiles that make great, great big letters that say, Pick, 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 quick, quick, quick. The preacher tried painting over, painting over the towels, but the letters wouldn't, wouldn't, won't stay covered up, and so the preacher has just given up and let them be. The other thing about the open arms that is different from other churches is that aren't any pews. People bring in their own fold-up chairs and long chairs, and some so, so sometimes it looks more like the congregation is watching a parade or sitting at a barbecue instead of being at church. It's kind of strange. It's kind of a strange church, and I thought when Dixie would fit right in. But the first time we brought Win Dixie to the open arms, the preacher tied him outside the front door. Why did we why did we bring him all the way here just to tie him up? I asked the preacher because dogs don't belong in church, Op Opal. The preacher said that's why he said Win Dixie up to a tree. He tied Win Dixie up to a tree. I said how there's there was lots of shade for him and that it ought to work out real good. Well, it didn't. The service started, and there was some singing and some cheering and some praying. And the preacher started pre and the then the preacher started preaching, and he wasn't but two or three words into his ceremony when there was a terrible howl coming from outside. The preacher tried to ignore it. Today he said, "Aroo!" said when Dixie. Please said the preacher, "Aroo!" Said when Dixie back, friends said the preacher, Rap! well, ah! well, when Dixie, everyone turned in their lawn chairs and fold up chairs and looked at one another. Opal said the preacher, oh, said when Dixie, yes, sir, I said, go get the dog, he yelled, yes, sir, I yelled back. I went outside and untied Win Dixie and brought him outside and he sat down beside me and smiled up at the preacher and then. And the preacher couldn't help it. He smelled back when Dixie had that effect on him. And so the preacher started in preaching again. When Dixie sat there listening to it, wiggling his ears this way and that, trying to catch all the words, and everything was being, and everything would have been all right except the, that a mouse ran across the floor. The open arms had mice. There were there from it when it was a picket quicks, and then. And there were lots of good things to eat in the building. And when the picket quick became the open arms Baptist Church of Noami, I think that's how you say it, the mice stayed around to eat all the leftover crumbs from the potluck sup suppers. The preacher kept on saying he was trying to have to do something about him, but he had never did because the truth is he couldn't stand the thought of hurting anything, even a mouse. Well, when Dixie said, saw the mouse, 
and he was up and after him. One minute everything was quiet and serious, and the preacher was going on and on and on, and the next minute when Dixie looked like a furry bullet shooting across the building, chasing the that mouse. He was barking and his feet were skidding all over the post picket quick floor, and people were clapping and hollering and pointing. They were re they really went wild when Win Dixie actually caught the mouse. I never in my life seen a dog catch a mouse, said Miss Nordley. She was sitting next to me. He's a special dog, I told her. I imagine so, she said back. Win Dixie stood up there in front of the whole church, wagging his tail and holding the mouse real careful in his mouth, holding on to him tight, but not squishing him. I believe that Mott has gone some got some retriever in him. Some somebody said somebody behind me. That's a hunting dog. When Dixie took the mouse over to the preacher and dropped it at his feet. And when the mouse tried to get away, when Dixie put his paws right on the mouse's tail. When he smiled up at the preacher, he showed him all his teeth. The preacher looked down at the mouse. He looked at when Dixie. He looked at me. He rubbed his nose. It got real quiet in the picket. In the picket quick. Let us pray. The preacher finally said for us. For this mouse, and everybody started laughing and clapping. The pre preacher picked up the mouse by the tail, and walked and threw it over the front door of the picket quick store. Went picket quick, and everybody applauded again. Then he came back, and we all prayed together. I prayed for my mama. I told God how much she would have enjoyed. She would have enjoyed hearing the story of Win Dixie catching the mouse. It would have made her laugh. I asked God if maybe I could be the one to tell her the story someday, and that I walked to God and how I was lonely in Naomi because I didn't know that many kids, only the ones from church, and they weren't, and there weren't that many kids at the open arms, just Dunlop and Stevie Dewberry, two brothers who weren't twins but looked like they were, and Amanda Wilkinson, whose face was pinched up like she was smelling something real bad smelling something real bad, and Sweetie Pie Thomas, was, who was only five years old and still mostly a baby, and none of them wanted to be my friend. Anyway, because to, they probably thought I'd tell on them to the preacher for every little thing they did wrong, and then they wouldn't get in trouble with God and their parents, so I told God that I was only even having Win Dixie, and finally I prayed for the mouse like the preacher suggested. I pray that he didn't get hurt when he was flying up the door of the open arms Baptist Church of Naomi. I pray that he landed on a nice soft patch of grass. And in chapter 5, we actually left off on a pretty good thing. Click here if you want to see me read chapter 5. But 4, click here if you want to see me read chapter 3. Click in here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I mean, I drop videos every single day. We're so close to 15 freaking videos and so close to one subscriber because we're literally zero subscribers. So please sit back, subscribe, and listen to my videos. I upload daily when I can, when I can, when I can. It's laughing moments. Come on, it's laughing moments. Laughing moments, baby. It's laughing moments. Laughing the moments.